Today I'll show you how to do a weld while using PE Weld Back to record all the data and prompt you through the, the, the process of that welding. So over here we've got a tablet. Um, you can run this on your smartphone, whether it be Apple or Android. Um, so we just click on the icon here and we've got now into our PE Weld Bank app. So we're just going to commence butt welding. And the first thing it asks us for is to put in our project. So the project is just whether it be a works order number or a project, so we just go with project. This has all already been inserted in your FMS. Now the FMS is the Fusion Management System, which is basically on your PC. You can actually do that work also on a tablet or a smartphone. Um, so you enter your projects at that level. So notice that I'm the operator, because it's using my tablet here. So we go commence butt welding. The next thing it takes us into is the optional safety take five or OHS screen. You can turn this on or off in the settings, but I'll just leave it on to show you through that today. So it's just thing questions like OHS questions like am I aware of crushing points, like hydraulic movement and so on. So we'll go through and we'll say yes to all these questions. Okay. So now it's saying, perform the task safely. The next thing it's asking for is the machine. Now it only asks us this at the start of the session that you go back and you, you use the same machine over and over, of course. Um, so the machine we're using today is the Ritmo, and the model is the Basic 200, and the serial number is the serial number that's on this particular machine. Now with your machines, you enter all those through the FMS, so that's, that's done one at a time in there. So if you've got 10 machines, it just takes sort of 15, 20 minutes to put all those machines into the FMS. We you insert things like your RAM dimension, whether you're talking imperial or metric. Um, and so they're then all available for your users on their smartphones or tablets. We go next. Now it's asking us for, asking us for the pipe and the, the pipe size and the SDR. So the pipe we're using here today is 160 mil. So 160. Now again, you can change this for metric if you're using, uh, um, sorry, change it from metric to imperial if you're using imperial pipe. We go SDR, uh, we're going 17 today. It automatically then calculates the wall thickness. If you're not happy with that, if it's actually different to that calculation, you can backspace over that and change that to what you've actually measured. The next thing it's asking is manufacturer. So we'll just put long black holes, approach limited and batch number. So the batch number will be on the pipe, so you then just copy the batch number into here. I'll just put something in there at the moment. And then the type of pipe. So the type of pipe could be P100, P80, or a number of different pipes we've got there, or even PP pipe, because this, the parameters are all in this for welding PP as well. So we have a P100 profile is pipe. So you get two options there, pipe or a fitting. So if you're welding a stub flange, you would have hit fitting, um, and so you might have a stub flange joined to a pipe. So in the second one, you'd have pipe, and the first one, you might have fitting. But it just goes ahead and assumes the second pipe's the same as the first, so same batch number and everything. If you want to change, you just backspace to that one and overtype it. The next thing it's asking us for is a checklist. This checklist is just the, your common housekeeping things, like is the weld area protected? So we're welding inside today, so we can say yes. Has the pipes been cleaned before placing in the machine? Yes. And the pipe ends covered? Yes. So we just go through all those um, questions. And the last one of those, we'll just tick yes to these ones. Um, the last one of those is saying, is the pipe aligned within 10% of the wall thickness? So we then bring the pipes up together. And you can then take a photograph of the pipes in the machine. So get a photograph of the pipes there. That do. Okay. All right. So then we go next. It's now asked. It's giving us a, a um, summary of what we've already put in there. So we've got our pipes, our machine 
a RAM dimension, and it's asking us then what, RAM, what welding standard we want. So we'll go single low pressure, or ISO single low pressure, um, and then it's looking for the drag. So with drag, it's pretty easy to see your drag with this, because you've got your gauge working here, you've got an analog copy of your gauge, you've got digital down below. So that's reading from this device here through to a transducer um, and up onto your, um, your smartphone or tablet. So we'll just bring the pressure up here, make sure I'm up first, just do a run, and we slowly increase the pressure. Now you can see in the digital readout, it's slowly coming up, and it'll go up to a certain point, and then when it drops back, that's effectively your drag. Seven. We drop back to sort of six point six point eight for our drag. Okay. So the next thing it's asking is, is calculate parameters. But before we can go forward, we've got to measure the heater plate. Now in some standards they're asking for that to be measured at the start of the day, at the start of the session, and also periodically through the day. So on this, on the tablet, you have the option to set that up to, to do whether, on, on, whether you want to do start of the day or, or through the day, or you can just touch the button at the top um, to do it randomly. Just. We'll take the heater plate out. Now, we've got this device here, it's another sender. Um, and this is now uh, the te surface temperature probe that's then reading through Bluetooth back to the tablet. So we'll go OK to this one. Oh, that's what I wanted there. So we've now, to activate this, we just hold the sensor against the heater plate in the first location, and this then turns the sensor on. So the heat from the heater plate will actually turn that on. So it takes a few seconds to start to, to begin with, and it's now reading the pressure. Once it's got a stable pressure here, it'll move to the next section. Okay, so once we've done that side, we hit next, flicks over to the next side, and we'll go and do the same on the opposite side. Okay, so that's four sections on each side of the heater plate. So we'll put that away. And you just put this back in the carry case till later on, or as I say, it could be the next day. We go next. So now we've got to follow the prompts. So the prompts are on here. The first thing is, oh, it's actually giving us some information there, but it's also telling us to close the carriage and set pressure to 32.2 bar which is our water pressure that includes, that includes our drag. So we just come up to basically halfway through the green zone. Okay, so we've got 31, go time a little bit more. But as long as we're somewhere in that green zone, we're actually where we should be. We can be pretty accurate with this system. So now it's saying next. So don't get ahead of yourself at this point. If you open the carriage, the, the, world, uh, the system won't know exactly where it is. So you need to follow the prompts on the screen. Here we go, next. And it says, open carriage, drop pressure to drag before proceeding. So open the carriage. And it says, insert the heater plate. So we insert the heater plate. And then it says, bring up heater plate to 29.2 to 35.1. Close that. And let it sit here to, at this pressure until we get a 1.5 millimetre bead around the ends of the pipe against the heater plate. In some standards it just says you've got to wait for evidence but on this one we selected, it's giving us a size. 
but we're nearly there. And you can see you're at the right pressure because you're still within the green zone and the pressure gauge. Okay, so we've got the right size bead up and we now reduce the pressure. Now when we reduce the pressure, it says here to reduce the pressure to drag, or zero to drag, so we run it down. As soon as it gets into that drag zone, it starts the timer. So now we've got to wait 130 seconds before we can remove the heater plate. Okay, I'll come back in 100 seconds and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so we've got about 10 seconds to go. At five seconds out, it'll start beeping and telling us to get ready to remove the heater plate. Okay, so we're ready to remove the heater plate. We'll open it open and it counts you in to close it and bring it up to pressure. So we brought that up to pressure again. I'm in the middle of that, that zone. It's telling me that I've got to be uh, halfway into that green zone and I can put my heater plate on. So now it's gone into our cooling time. So we've got about 12 minutes to go here. Um, so we'll come back in just over 10 minutes and we'll show you how we finalise this weld. Okay, we're back and we've got about 10 seconds to go. So once we get down to zero, it'll tell us we've finished the weld. There we go. Okay, so now it's time to, to move on and you can take the the pipe out of the machine. But before we do that, we'll just review this weld. So on the tablet, it's given us a unique number. So the number is made up by the date. So we've got 2020, um, 08, the 16th, and the time is 1720. And then it's got a number of, oh, it's got um, some seconds, and then uh, another three numbers that are part of my welding code. Um, and then just another unique number. So it's asking us to take a photograph, but before we do that, we can see the graph at the bottom of the, the screen now, and we can zoom in on that graph to wherever we want to be, um, just to have a quick look at what we've done during the course of that weld. But we'll go ahead and, so let's mark the information on the tablet. So it's asking us for the, the date, 2020, 08, one six one seven two zero oh, eight five two seven. Also, it's got my operating number there, which I can also put on here. PS O O five eight. Then you can take a photograph of this weld. So what I do is do the photograph, so you're getting a photograph of the bead, you can see that the pipe's still in the machine at the end of the cooling time, and you've got that unique identifier. All right, so that's our weld finished. Again, there's our chart. We go next, and it gives us the opportunity here then to put some, some comments in. So whatever you want to put in here, I'll just put in test weld. And the next box allows you to do a, a diagram of what you've just done. Let's just say it's straight bit of pipe with the weld in the middle. And it says, I, Darren Poynton, carried out welding according to specifications. And I can sign off on that and finish. Gives me the opportunity then to go and do another weld or move on. So at this point here, I'll say, I don't want to start another weld. If I chose to start another weld, it would take me back to a few screens earlier. So then the, uh, the list of the things you need to do, the item list, and then you move forward again. But we'll just go no to that, and it just takes us back to where we were. All right, so that's it. So it's quite easy to do a weld using the PE Weld Bank. Um, if there's any more information you, you need to have, send us an email at info at peweldbank.com or visit our site peweldbank.com. Thank you.